today we are going to be going over the best and worst of the Buccaneers' Week 2 victory against the Detroit Lions. A massive win for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Really, really is... Uh, uh, an upset win, you know, it is an upset win, uh, despite what a lot, of, I know there are a lot of fans in our comment section and a lot of fans on social media had belief that the Buccaneers are going to win this game, but the consensus was that the Lions were probably going to win a lot of it due to the Detroit Lions being favored due to the Buccaneers have it being banged up uh, a lot factored into it. Regardless though, the Buccaneers pull off an upset 20 to 16 win in Detroit, what an impressive win by this football team. And I'll tell you what, right now, there's going to be a lot more good than bad on this list. So let's get to our top performers of the week. We're going to start off with an honorable mention, I'll say. I was going to put him on the list, but I'll, I'll give an honorable mention to Baker Mayfield. 12-19 and 19 for 185 yards, one touchdown, one interception, but also five carries for 34 yards and a touchdown. So uh, Baker Mayfield was the Buccaneers' leading rusher. Uh, on Sunday against the Lions, and he did what he needed to do, right? Uh, I think he played a really solid game, protected the football for the most part. Uh, that interception was a bad ball, but other than that, didn't really have anything, uh, any other uh, iffy throws throughout the entire night. So uh, I, I thought he really played well. Uh, I thought he did what he needed to do, and, and I thought, you know, again, him extending the play with his legs is such an underrated uh, thing about him. I, I think now he's nobody's going to mistake him for Lamar Jackson or whatever, but this guy can move. And this guy, it's going to be something where teams are going to have to start really paying attention to it. And maybe that opens up something else in the offense. So credit to Baker Mayfield, credit to Liam Cohen for putting him in some spots to play call, you know, basically the quarterback draw that got the touchdown there. Um, Made a couple of guys miss on a play earlier. Uh, Baker was all over the place. And so he definitely has shined, I, I think, in these first two weeks. And it, it's been really nice to see him getting comfortable in a Liam Cohen offense. It looks like he's been in this offense for years at this point. Like It looks like he has been running this offense. This ex And I understand it is similar. There's similar concepts to what they did last year and this and that. But it is still different. And he looks like he's very comfortable with everything. And uh, a pretty solid day from Baker Mayfield. Chris Godwin, the Buccaneers' leading receiver by a wide margin uh, on Sunday. Seven catches for 117 yards and a touchdown. Chris Godwin was all over the place, and he was Baker Mayfield's favorite target. I said Baker Mayfield had 12 completions. Chris Godwin had seven of them. Mike Evans had three catches. Jalen McMillan had one. Rashad White had one. That's it. <laughs> like There was five other catches uh, besides Chris Godwin's seven. So Godwin was the man for Baker today, uh, and he really showed out. And again, is starting to look like that Chris Godwin of old. I'm not saying he was bad in 2023, but it, it looked like a guy who was still coming off of a major injury. He looks healthy. He looks quick. He looks like the 2019, 2020 version of Chris Godwin. And that is invaluable to this offense, I think. So shout out to Chris Godwin. Had a great day. Uh, second week in a row had a great day. And he continues to just be a, you know, a just – a reception merchant, basically, for the Buccaneers. And a, a third down, Mr. Third Down, right, for the Bucs. Whenever they need a big play, it seems like Baker's turn into Chris Godwin. So, shout out to him. Next, we're going to turn over to the defensive side of the ball. And I will say, the defensive side of the football was the most impressive to me in this game. Not only do they go into this game down Kalaji Kanti, down Anthony Field Jr., they then get down Vita Vea. I mean, you're talking about a nightmare scenario for the Buccaneers, being down both Vita Vea and Antonio Field Jr., and they still somehow find a way to get it done. That's because of guys like Jordan Whitehead, who's first on our list, 11 total tackles, three assists, was all over the place. I thought Jordan Whitehead was great in run defense, uh, something the Lions obviously really wanted to do, and I think his tackling was was sure tackling. That's important, especially in run defense, you know, filling in the gaps and stuff. They sent him on a few run blitzes, which hit home uh, from time to time. thought Jordan Whitehead was really, really good on Sunday. Servasier Dennis. So this is the first time we've mentioned him as a top performer in a, in a regular season game, I think possibly ever. Uh, Dennis is really, really good and he's flashed. And I think maybe, maybe it was just the matchup. Who knows? But like KJ Britt might be, have his snaps taken away a bit. Maybe, maybe. I, I don't know. But 
Dennis, I think, definitely deserves a little bit more of a look because he was impressive. Uh, there was a, the play on third down that, that went out to Gibbs. And uh, Zervasia Dennis went like a missile and just tackled him, set up a fourth and long, and the Lions, you know, couldn't convert it. So uh, it was it was pretty uh, pretty clutch plays from Zervasia Dennis. And not saying KJ Britt's bad, it's just uh, I I really liked what I saw out of Zervasia Dennis, and I think he uh, if he keeps this up, he he will eventually. I think. Uh, take away more snaps from, from KJ Britt. Even if KJ Britt's playing okay, I think Shirazi and Dennis would have made that much of an impact there. Uh, the other guy I'm gonna, going to mention is Zion McCollum. And this is an important one because they are putting, the Buccaneers are putting a lot of eggs in the Zion McCollum basket. And I think McCollum played fantastic. Opens the game. First pass of Jared Goff's is intercepted by Zion McCollum. His first interception of the 2024 campaign was their pass interference. Maybe, but still counts all the same. They didn't call it. So uh, it still counts all the same. Still counts as a pick for Zion McCollum. So I, I do like McCollum. I liked him before the season, but I understood the risk, right? The risk that the Buccaneers were taking. If you remember last year in that same building, in that same building in Detroit in the playoffs, Zion McCollum had to come in for the injured Jamel Dean, and it did not work out well for the Buccaneers. Uh, Zion McCollum was picked on, and they they basically did whatever they wanted to when throwing to McCollum's way. And this time around, he was really good. Almost came up with another interception uh, in this game just got it ripped away from him by a monitor St. Brown. But Zion McCollum, a great showing, especially after he was iffy to play all week. Fantastic work there by McCollum. Now, I did want to touch on a few negatives in this game. We do the best and the worst. So some of the worst, uh, just in school. I, I, look, <laughs> Good effort, I, I guess you could say. It's tough. It's a tough assignment to guard Aiden Hutchinson for a full game. I get it. I do think the Buccaneers' game plan to guard Aiden Hutchinson was a little bit wrong, I, I think. They they left Justin School on an island too many times, and we're just hoping that, oh, okay, it won't be that bad. Aiden Hutchinson is one of the best pass rushers in the entire NFL. Justin School is going to be in need a bit more help, and he did on Sunday. I mean, Aiden Hutchinson with three sacks in the first quarter, ends with five sacks. Justin School, hopefully Luke Gedeke can come back this, this next week here from the concussion. Hopefully he can clear concussion protocol and get back out there because uh, it was not a great first impression uh, from Justin School. Another name I want to bring up is Rashad White. Now, White was pretty inactive today. Um, and again, he did get a little bit banged up, but 10 carries for 18 yards, 1.8 yards average, one catch for five yards. Look, he just, he wasn't a big part of the offense. I'm not saying he has to be every week, but it was a little bit disappointing to see him not really get going there. Uh, also, I believe on one sack, he, he missed a key block there where they were trying to, to chip uh, and he just missed the block. Not great, you know, not great stuff from, from Rashad White. And hopefully he can bounce back, and I think he can. I, I definitely think he can. Uh, I don't think it's going to mean like, oh, Bucky Irving is going to be the starter. But, like, I do want to see, you know, Rashad White with a bounce back game here upcoming against the Denver Broncos. And then lastly, we're going to talk about Jake Camarda, who, uh, look, Todd Bowles was very open in the preseason about not being happy with the punting situation, and Camarda didn't help his case. He had multiple short punts, including the final one, which was really short. The defense was able to step up and hold the Lions with, out of the end zone, but uh, he's putting the Bucks in some bad situations that he's not flipping the field as much as I feel he needs to. And uh, I, I think it's something to monitor going forward because – with Todd Bowles being so open about what our punting needs to be better and this and that, to me, that opens my eyes that like, yeah, they're paying attention to that. So Jake Camarda, I think, needs to pick it up here in the next couple of weeks. It didn't cost them today, but eventually it will. And I do think that if things don't change soon for Jake Camarda, I do wonder what the Buccaneers plan of action would be. But let me know who you guys will think for the top players. Who are some players you were disappointed in? I want to hear both of those aspects of it. From a win, there's always going to be good and bad, right? From a loss, there's always going to be good and bad. I'm curious to see what you guys think was the good and the bad in this game. Thank you all for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and go Bucks.